Installing Windows on a Mac Pro from 2012? Is it possible? And can we play some of the latest PC games on this thing right here? Well, there's only one way to find out. If you want to get rid of this annoying activate windows message then today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered for as little as 12 US dollars after you enter that coupon code BFTYC you can cop yourself a legit single end user license today links in description below This right here is a Mac Pro 5.1 and these were made from 2009 to 2012 this one here being a 2012 model However, upon starting this video, I thought, wow, I was going to add a graphics card to this PC and then I was going to make a video for you guys detailing how you could get an old Mac Pro and add a graphics card and then get yourself into PC gaming on the cheap. The problem with that was is that I picked this thing up locally for a hundred Aussie dollars and you're probably sitting back and you're like, whoa, that's a really good deal. And that's what I thought as well after I checked the prices of this thing online where on eBay I saw one going on free bid here locally for about 1200 Aussie dollars. So I was taken back and I've actually got to call the person who sold me this because I got to pay him a bit more money and because they clearly didn't know how much it was worth. I didn't realize how much it was worth and so we just did a deal for the hardware inside the PC. Now, I've always been looking for one of these uh, ever since I was in Japan, where in Japan, when I saw them, they were all just stripped of any parts to make them workable. Of course, you could do a lot of custom work and get these to work with um, contemporary hardware. However, I wanted to actually do something with the original hardware, since it actually, to me, is quite special. Where we've got in this PC in particular, a dual socketed x58 motherboard with eight slots of memory in total now included in these mac pros you can find yourself various different specs but what we've got here is two x5650 xeon processors these were 32 nanometer cpus and in this case they're six cores 12 threads and since we've got two of those cpus linked up together that now makes 12 cores 24 threads and also since these motherboards at least when the single socketed ones were released they supported triple channel and since we've got eight memory slots and two cpus that now makes for six channels of memory you're probably thinking well four slots of memory for three channels how does that work well on x58 they actually did four slots over three channels and since we're doubling that we do get eight slots of memory over six channels kind of a little bit weird but that being said, what we've got in this build today is 32 gigabytes of DDR3 memory, which is what it came installed with, even though the original model came with 24 gigabytes of DDR3 memory. It's then got two proprietary active CPU cooling solutions connected to a proprietary motherboard, which then connects to a proprietary connector, which then connects to another proprietary motherboard. It's kind of a little bit weird how they did this Mac Pro. If you like to think of X58, you'll know that there's a north bridge and a south bridge where essentially they've done the north bridge with all the hardware of the CPU and memory slots on a single board. Then they've done all the other hardware on another board, which you then connect via that proprietary connector. Look, this thing is going to be so much proprietary. We could just nickname it the proprietary gargantuan. Then moving up through the top of the build, we've got a proprietary <laughs> power supply. Now the final component, or should I say components of this build, is the two graphics cards that came included. These are the HD 5770s. Now these things, by modern day standards, are ancient. And in fact, when I tried to run a gaming benchmark on them, even something as easy to run as Heaven, this would not even boot at the standard 1080p resolution. And then I dropped it down to a lower resolution at low settings and it was getting around I think two to five FPS so <laughs> completely unplayable for playing games in 2022 though you may notice that I'm talking about running benchmarks already on it and here's where some really good news comes about and that is 
that it's able, even though it's a Mac system with a unique Mac BIOS loaded onto the motherboard, it's actually able to boot also a Linux or a Windows bootable and they worked absolutely no problems. In this case, we're gonna be installing Windows 10 because we wanna see how this old Mac Pro 5.1 can run games in 2022, at least without the graphics cards, because those 25770s are very dated, and as we saw before, they weren't giving us much performance at all. But installing Windows on this system, all I had to do was insert the USB stick and go through the standard installation process. Even though when I'm booting up the machine, I'm just greeted with a white screen, there's no way to get into the BIOS to check any settings like you would on a typical consumer oriented motherboard. And then also in Windows, once I installed Windows, there was no way to tune the X58 system itself. I tried downloading the Intel Extreme Utility, which you can do on some older OEM boards that don't allow overclocking in the BIOS. However, I was met with a very interesting message saying it just simply doesn't support this platform. So Intel versus Apple, it seems, goes back quite the time in history. So now it's time to see if we can game on this old Mac Pro 5.1 system via giving it a graphics card upgrade. Well, we saw that FPS before, the 2 to 5 FPS. I believe that was mainly due to the HD 5770 graphics cards in that they're just too old to really do anything, especially in 2022. So what we decided to do was grab a GTX 1070 and I found this off my local marketplace for 400 Aussie dollars. So even in this graphics card climate, as I've said in a previous video, I'll put the link up here. If you wanna get a graphics card, you should be quick on the local market. That's where you're gonna get the best deals. But this thing needs a single eight pin PCIe connection. And since we've only got two six pin PCIe connections in this Mac Pro here, we're actually gonna use a two six pin to eight pin adapter. I've got the GTX 1070 in and it won't boot. What am I gonna do? If I had my time again, I would do it all the same. Situation no. So initially we tried to boot this system up with the GTX 1070 and it would just freeze upon booting. Essentially what happens with these original Macs is that they've got a pre-programmed BIOS with a particular set of GPUs that they will only recognize. And so if you have a different graphics card outside of that, the PC simply won't make it to your operating system, it'll freeze. I found this out soon enough when I also tried an old even HD 5670, which even though it's in the same line of GPUs as the HD 5770 used in this Mac Pro, it's actually a different model. And Apple did not add this graphics card into the list, so it would fail to boot even on this older graphics card. However, this is Tech Yes City, and we always like to try and do janky workarounds. And that's exactly what we managed to find here, where this will only work in one particular configuration, where you've got to mount the HD5770 or at least a GPU on that official list in your top PCIe bracket, at least with this build since it's actually what they call a BTX where it's the opposite. It's actually upside down and in Australia that would be downside up. So technically in Australia it is still the top slot. Basically the graphics card that originally came with the Mac Pro 5.1 has to be in PCIe slot 1. Otherwise, it just simply won't boot with another graphics card. And this is evidenced by me putting even the GTX 1070 in PCIe slot one and putting the HD 5770 in the second slot. And it's still, even though a signal came out, it got to the Windows boot screen and just crashed. However, once we put the GTX 1070 in the second slot, and still, this is by the way, still connected to the CPU. So you're not gonna lose any performance in having your graphics card in the second slot as opposed to the first slot. Since both these top two slots still both share the same speeds, we were then able to get into Windows, install the GTX 1070 drivers, 
And then what we do to get around any sort of weird workings, we then show desktop only on monitor two. Now, of course, if you've got a two monitor setup, you can then put on the HD 5770 as your second monitor, have a dual monitor setup or whatever you wanna do. But I wanna do this so that all the games will by default boot off the GTX 1070. And we tested this out already in Unigine Heaven and we're finally getting smooth FPS. I think we're ready to game as well as the fact that we're using a 360 Hertz monitor and 360 Hertz is also working now in Windows. So we managed to have some workarounds here, even though we use those two six pin to eight pins, I actually had to borrow a six pin to SATA adapter and use one of the spare hard drive bays power connectors to get this to work. And now we're back after that huge gaming session. It's actually nighttime here, so I spent quite a bit of time gaming on this system, and I was completely blown away by hardware, of course, that's over 10 years old, and it can still play games with smooth FPS. And the only problem we really came into was Fortnite, where we tried to run it on high settings and the system started stuttering, but on low settings with epic view distance, 100% screen res, it was running buttery smooth. And all the other games were getting very good FPS. Though you probably wouldn't want to couple anything more powerful than the GTX 1070 with this system because unfortunately we can't overclock the CPUs. And if you guys have watched at Tech Yes City, I have overclocked X58 CPUs and motherboards in the past and extracted a lot of performance to the tune of around 40 to 50%, depending on the CPU and cooling solution that you get. Now, one of the things that you may be wondering about is the temperatures on this system. And I was happy to report that they were okay. They're not the best I've seen, but we are using a blower style cooler on the GTX 1070 where that was remaining under 80 degrees. And that's actually not bad. If it goes over 80 degrees, and it's getting closer to that throttle territory, but these blower style coolers aren't renowned for being the best in terms of temperatures. And of course, we've got an HD 5770 right below that putting out heat on its own. And one quite unfortunate thing about these old HD 5770s is they're not the best in terms of idle power consumption. So they were getting a little bit noisy and hot even on the desktop. So speaking of the CPU cooling and the rest of the system, the CPUs were remaining under 70 degrees pretty much all the time. I also ran an IR camera over the motherboard and the whole system, and there was no real bad hotspots, which means that they've put a lot of good componentry into this system, and at these temperatures, it will last a long time. And that's, I guess, why people are still buying these units to this date, because there's a lot of quality stuff packed in them, and they stand the test of time and they're probably gonna keep on working because they're built pretty well and the airflow is actually pretty decent. Then you may be wondering, what am I going to do with this system from here on in? And I'm actually gonna be just like one of those other guys on eBay and I'm gonna sell this to a Mac enthusiast. And I do put an emphasis there on Mac because I am not personally a Mac user, so I don't really see the benefits of having something like this 
when I can get that money and spend it on more enthusiast PC parts that are customizable and I can get much better performance for the dollar. So what I'm gonna do is put the original HD 5770s back in, bring it back to its stock level, leave a few hard drives and an SSD in there and then put it up for auction where I think the biggest appeal of these systems is that not only I think has there been this resurgence with people just wanting to get some of this older stuff because of how well it was made, especially the case, it actually is pretty cool. But there's also a big rush because these Macs, I believe, still support some of the latest OSs coming out from Apple, where if you're able to get one of those later Mac OSs, you can add it to this system. And the beauty of that is, since a lot of the parts here are interchangeable, you can replace parts individually if they go faulty, where a lot of the newer Mac stuff, if something breaks down, you have to replace the whole Mac device. So I think this still does have a lot of appeal going for it, even in 2022. But of course, since I'm not a Mac guy, I'm gonna pass this thing on. Though with all that out of the way, I hope you enjoyed today's video, especially the weird fix that we had to do with the first slot GPU and getting around that initial boot problem. But in the end, we did get around it. So that was some good news. And I definitely had a lot of fun tinkering and doing a janky fix. And of course, in the end, getting a smooth PC gaming experience. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and also ring that bell, hit that sub button. And also, if you wanna get some behind the scenes access, hit the join button for as little as a dollar a month. You get behind the scenes tech, yes, access. Though with that aside, we got the question of the day here, which comes from Nathan Brown. And they ask in our recent video, great news, this means bike parts will get cheaper. After all, we aren't seeing those prices because of supply chain, right? It's the miners. So when it comes to GPUs, as long as those mining profits are higher, then crypto miners are gonna keep buying those things up and they're gonna buy them up in relation to how much money they can make, which at this point in time, Ethereum is still proof of work. So it means that miners are still gonna buy those GPUs and pretty much put them to work and make them money rather than gamers who aren't prepared to pay as much for those graphics cards are going to sit it out, especially when we've got Xbox Series Xs, Series Ss, and also PlayStation 5s. At least in Australia, these things are coming back into stock on the local market. I've actually seen them cheaper than the MSRPs. Now, when it comes to bike parts, I'm not sure what's going on in the biking scene. I do have a friend that does tell me that a lot of the collectibles in the BMX industry are going up, but that's because a lot more people are starting to collect BMX bikes, especially with the resurgence of Stranger Things. I think they had a focus on BMXs. I do personally love BMXs, but when it all comes down to it with these supply chain issues, this has all been brought about by not the supply chain issues themselves, but by governments and their restrictions, and of course their unrelenting motivation to keep printing money. And these two problems combined means that you've got more money floating out in the system, and of course, restrictions stopping people from working and producing goods and services to take that money. And so what we've got is actually a double whammy where prices not only just go up, they go up a lot faster than you would have previously expected. Though of course, there is always a trade-off to these things. And since wages haven't increased and kept up with inflation, then that means the average middle class and lower class person is actually getting poorer and they don't have as much money for discretionary items. So they actually do go down in price. And then the prices of your basic necessities, food, water, and shelter do go up. Hope that answers that question. I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.